the idea for Minnesota Cuke was based on a video game that Big Idea put out about a year ago or so. And then uh, one of our artists, Joe Spadiford, had the idea about what if he was searching for something like a hairbrush. And there, there are several stories in the Bible that, um, you know, we've come to several times as sort of iconic stories that we've wanted to tell. Minnesota Cuke worked really well because we were able to, you know, retell the story in the biblical account of Samson and, and hit the major points. Samson didn't recognize that his power came from God. He would say, I'm going to do this and I'll do that. And so it seemed like a perfect connection with the people being misinformed that the, the hairbrush might have power. It all came from God to begin with. The plot had been kind of laid for us. We just filled it in with a lot more gags. It just snowballed from there. <laughs> In a studio, I'm working with a bunch of guys who are artists, very artistic types. So unfortunately, these are the guys that in school were almost always picked on. All I'll say is that I ran away a lot as a kid. Third grade, walking home from school one day. I think it was in the fifth grade. We had this one kid who had us convinced that he knew karate. I just sort of let in noogies and, and that sort of thing. And these two big kids from the fifth grade, I run up behind me and smack, push me over in the ditch. Yeah, I think everybody deals with a bully at some point or other, you know, Eventually, you're going to run into somebody who's bigger than you and who doesn't like you very much. Oh, no! It's God Junior's toast! The stories themselves kind of deal with bullying from two directions. You know, one, you know, a child being bullied. You know, Minnesota Cuke, you know, the hero himself, you know, becomes a bully. I'll tell you what we're going to do, Martin. I'm going to get that brush first, and I'm going to use its power to defeat all the bullies in the world. I think most stories uh, teach you to to stand up to bullies and be ready to fight. And I didn't want to go that route. There's a proverb in the Old Testament even that says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. Hopefully, eventually they'll come around and they won't be your enemy forever. You're right, Julia. Being mean back to a bully just makes me a bully too. There's actually a lot of emotion, you know, being carried by these vegetables. And so I felt comfortable adding a depth to the music also. Every kid needs a place to go think, and for Junior, it's his, his treehouse. And a treehouse very similar to the one actually in, in Junior and the Bully story. It was a place for me to play and use my imagination and cultivate my imagination. It was definitely a place for me to, you know, find refuge and, and think through stuff. But you have to come down, you have to face your problems, but you can't, you don't do it alone. You have God's help. And you know, you go to your parents, and they'll, they'll help you through it. Hey, Figaro, can I find my best days? I used to go over and get my hair cut at this barber shop. All of the guys in the barber shop were Italian, and that's all they would do, would just yell at each other all day. Why I wanna use your razor, Leo? My razor suits me just fine. I'm just a saying, I can't find my razor, and you the only other one here. Oh, Leo and Figaro, yeah, they're brothers. In fact, over the cash register, if you look, see a little picture of a carrot and a little bouffant hairdo? That's their mom, Mama Leone. Canadians! I love Canadians. I have relatives who are Canadian. Canadians are wonderful people. That's why at the end, they're the good guys. Nobody comes to the rescue better than the Royal Canadian Mounties, eh? My favorite pizza. You know, I like Canadian bacon and pineapple. Oh, pepperoni and sausage. Ham and pineapple. You know, I work for vegetables, so around here I eat mostly meat pizzas. Pizza ain't always come to me. Tim had a great concept for the song. Great lyrics. Pizza Angel came out of my affinity for a lot of 50s music, and my favorite songs were always those tragedy songs. It wasn't until I brought John Troushed in to play a lot of guitar work on it that it really took on, oh yeah, that's the sound. The Pizza Angel, they're not real angels. Well, they're, they're Pizza Angel because they come and they, you know, they deliver, they're the messenger that comes and brings you the pizza, and so that's, that's where it came from. A chocolate malta. Malt. Right. Chocolate. My favorite type of malt, straight chocolate. I like chocolate malt. I just like the regular chocolate malt. I have no idea why we made it strawberry ice cream in the malt shop. Isn't that every kid's fantasy just to have a swimming pool full of ice cream? So. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book.
The way that we teach lessons with stories in Veggie Tales is with the biblical worldview, the idea that there is a God who made us and who loves us and who wants to have a relationship with, with us. And when you assume that, you know, that influences, you know, how you look at the world and how you tell your stories. I want kids to walk away knowing they don't have to be scared of bullies. You treat other people the way you want to be treated. You bless those who curse you. It's really, really hard, but it brings a lot more inner peace and a lot more strength and that strength that, that comes from God. God doesn't want you to be afraid. He doesn't want you to be timid and he doesn't want you to have to feel like you have to go hide. But he doesn't want you to become a bully either. And if we can relate that in Veggie Tales in a story that's, um, that's fun um, and that can engage kids and, and model for them biblical behavior, um, then you know, that's, that's what we really hope to do and hopefully you know, kids will really learn from that.